para-amino benzoic acid, or PABA, is also known as vitamin B10. It's an organic compound found in certain foods and it's produced by the chemical industry. It was once added to sun cream and it's been used as a supplement to help to darken grey hair and to improve certain skin issues. Vitamin B10 is an alternative name for the organic compound and it's a white crystalline substance. It's considered part of the vitamin B complex although it's not a vitamin nor an essential nutrient. It's found in brewer's yeast, organ meat, mushrooms, whole grain and spinach. Your body can also synthesize the compound using certain bacteria in the gut. The PABA then assists in the production of folate or vitamin B9, yet the amount of folate produced is inadequate to meet your daily needs, so you still need to obtain it from other dietary sources. The PABA is thought to benefit the skin and the hair when taken as a supplement. The PABA can absorb ultraviolet rays, especially UVB rays, which are associated with sunburn and DNA damage. It was thus a key ingredient in sunscreen starting in the 40s, but it was later linked to allergic skin reactions in some people. Since 2019, PABA is no longer generally recognised as safe and effective for use externally in sun cream. It's sometimes found in certain lotions and other products marketed as moisturisers, often in combination with aloe vera. Besides protecting against UV rays, the PABA is also claimed to help with skin issues relating to hardening tissue buildup and discoloration, although how the compound can improve these conditions remains unclear. For one, the PABA has been investigated for its use in the treatment of Peyronie's disease, which is characterised by the build-up of fibrous plaque inside the penis. One study found that taking a potassium PABA supplement significantly decreased plaque size in the individuals with Peyronie's disease over 12 months compared to a placebo. That said, more research is needed and PABA is currently thought to be effective for treating this condition. The PABA has also been identified as a possible treatment for scleroderma, an autoimmune disease that causes hardening of the skin and fibrous deposits in the organs. One retrospective study in 467 people with scleroderma found 90% of those who received potassium PABA supplements experienced mild, moderate or marked skin softening compared with 20% of the control group. Even so, this is one of the only studies on the topic and it was conducted over 30 years ago. Other research has suggested that PABA has no effect on skin hardening associated with scleroderma, so additional research is needed. Finally, the PABA is often touted as a treatment for vitiligo, a condition marked by the depigmentation and white patches on the skin. While some people with this disorder claim that PABA supplements help, limited scientific studies support the claim. One of the earliest uses of PABA supplements was to help with the re-pigmentation of prematurely greying hair. It's still used for this purpose today and many personal testimonies suggest it's effective despite a lack of research. Studies in the 40s and the 50s found taking PABA at daily doses ranging from 200 milligrams to 24 grams led to hair darkening and it helped grey hair to return to its original colour. It's important to note that some of the research found that the hair became grey again after the participants discontinued the supplement. What's more, even though the PABA was shown to darken grey hair in the early studies, this effect has not been studied recently. Some people have had allergic reactions to sunscreens that contain PABA causing red, itchy rashes. Today, the PABA is no longer added to sunscreen. It's rarely found in cosmetics. Some individuals might be sensitive to the high oral supplement dose of PABA, but human research is needed on this. Taking high doses of PABA is not considered safe for people with liver or kidney issues. There's been at least six case reports of acute liver injury after using PABA supplements for Peyronie's disease, 
However, this side effect might not apply to those without underlying conditions who take the PABA. It's also important to note that PABA is considered an ineffective treatment for the disease based on the available research. Additionally, it's thought the PABA can accumulate in the kidneys, although there's no scientific sources to pertain to this claim. Thus, those with liver or kidney issues should not take PABA without medical supervision. What's more, the PABA might interact with sulfur drugs, including certain antibiotics, and decrease their effectiveness. Finally, the safety of the PABA supplements in children and pregnant or breastfeeding women is unknown. Minimal research supports the use or the benefit of PABA oral supplements. As such, there's no recommended standard dose. Most supplements on the market recommend 500 milligrams per day, but they can range from 100 milligrams to over 1000 milligrams. The effects of PABA are not fully understood and there's no standardized dose for the supplement. PABA is also known as vitamin B10. It's an organic compound found in some foods and supplements. In the past, it was a common ingredient in sunscreen as it can block UVB rays. Limited research also suggests that it can help to darken grey hair and improve skin issues that involve tissue buildup and hardening. While topical applications and most supplements are considered generally safe, the effects are still not fully understood and high doses may lead to harmful side effects. For more on herbs, supplements and natural treatment plans, check out my website.